Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about the second colligative property, elevation of boiling point. In my previous video, I have already explained about the first colligative property, lowering of vapor pressure, Raoult's law. You can check the link of that video in the description below. So in this video, I am going to explain what elevation of boiling point actually is and we are going to see the mathematical derivation related to it as well. So let's start. To understand about elevation of boiling point, first of all, we need to know what boiling point actually is. Till now, we have been studying the temperature at which the liquid starts to boil is called boiling point. But is that the true statement? No, not at all. That is not the true statement. Now, we need to understand another concept of boiling point. Suppose we have a vessel in which there is liquid, say water. We are considering water over here. And we started to raise its temperature. We are providing heat energy to it. Now, the temperature of this water is increasing. Now, what will happen? After some time, it will start to form vapor. I am representing vapor by this circle. It will start to form vapor. Now, we know that there is air in the surrounding. That is atmosphere and atmosphere has certain pressure. Atmosphere is applying certain pressure on this water as well. That is 1 atm, right? 760 mm of Fg. Now, we are hitting this water and vapor is being formed. More and more vapor will form as we hit the temperature. And there will be a point when this vapor pressure, that is this vapor pressure will be equal to the atmospheric pressure, P atm. There will be a point when the vapor pressure of this water or uh, liquid is equal to the pressure that is the atmospheric pressure. Now at that point only the water will start to boil. So the temperature at which the atmospheric pressure will be equal to the vapor pressure of the liquid is called boiling point. You need to understand this now. Okay, Let me write the definition of it. The temperature. at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to that of atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure Sorry, there should not be that equal to the atmospheric pressure that is 1 atm is called the boiling point it's called the boiling point so what is boiling point now if somebody asks you you need to be able to give the answer okay the boiling point is the temperature at which the uh, vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure then only the liquid will start to boil now what if we put some solute in it some solute in it let me draw another figure over here this is water and we have added some non volatile some non volatile solute an example of that is sucrose Suppose we have added a non-volatile solute that is sucrose in water. Then what will happen? It will block some of the surface side, right? As this is non-volatile, then we have to heat it at a higher temperature for it to convert into vapor. Then what will happen? At 100 degrees Celsius, that is the boiling point of pure water at 100 degrees Celsius, there will be only few numbers of vapor and that will not be equal to the atmospheric pressure listen to me one more time okay when solute is added when non volatile solute is added in water at 100 degree celsius the vapor pressure of the solution will not will not be equal to the atmospheric pressure that means it will not boil at 100 degree celsius the solution will not boil so the solution will not boil at all at 100 degrees celsius then 
for to make it boil what do we need to do yes you are thinking correct we need to increase the temperature right if we increase the temperature then only more and more vapor molecules will be formed over here and finally after some time after regime some more temperature then only this will be equal to p atmosphere will be equal to vapor pressure okay this condition will be satisfied so at 100 degree celsius the solution will not boil although there is water it will not boil because of the non volatile solute sucrose so because of this sucrose the vapor pressure of this solution must be increased right that the vapor pressure must be increased that is the temperature should be increased to make the vapor pressure equal to 1 atm so what do we understand over here when non volatile solute is added in a solution the boiling point actually increases that means more heat energy is required for the liquid or for the solution to boil right let me write it over here when non volatile solute is added in the liquid in the liquid the vapor pressure decreases decreases to make the vapor pressure equal to 1 atm the temperature the temperature of the solution the temperature of the solution must be increased must be increased that means the boiling point increases right that means the boiling point increases now this becomes the new boiling point of the solution then obviously there will be some difference between the boiling point of the pure solvent and that of the solution right there will be difference between the boiling point of the pure solvent that is water and the solution that is water with sucrose the difference the difference between between the boiling points of solution and pure solvent pure solvent is called what is it called elevation of boiling point elevation of boiling point so this is what we call the elevation of boiling point so what we can do elevation of boiling point is actually equal to uh, boiling point of the solution minus boiling point of the solvent so you need to understand this okay elevation of boiling point is actually the difference between the boiling point of the solution and the boiling point of the pure solvent whatever temperature must be increased to uh, make it boil that is actually equal to the elevation of boiling point we understood this theoretically let's try to understand this more properly in uh, by graphical method for the elevation of study of boiling point let us make the graph of pure solvent and different solution against temperature there is a way to make this graph look at here being very carefully okay so in the x axis there is temperature in the y axis there is pressure this is the origin so do one thing uh, draw a line here like this this is p okay and you can draw a line dotted line over here this is tb that is the temperature of boiling point of pure solvent okay and this p is 1 atm that is the atmospheric pressure then do one more thing draw two more lines like this and two more line horizontally like this well can you draw this yes this is very simple right now do one thing from here join this point and this point and produce this line okay like this 
so in this point and this point okay so it's not a perfect one but draw like this similarly from here join this point and draw a line like this and from third one just draw it like this so this we got three uh, graph over here three curves over here this first curve is for the solvent pure solvent the second curve is for solution one solution one when the non-volatile solute is added in the second one more non-volatile solute is added and this is solution two this is solution two this is temperature t1 this is t2 here this is p1 and this is p2 and let's consider this point to be a here this to be b and this to be c this is d this is e and this one is f so this is the complete graph for our study of elevation of boiling point different conclusions can be drawn from this graph let's understand them one by one here what do we see the curve of these solutions always lie below the up solvent when uh, there is no solute then this is the curve when little bit amount of non volatile solute is added then the curve shifted shifts over here right and similarly if more amount of non volatile solute is added the curve further shifts downside downwards right so this is the curve that we get let me write it over here the vapor pressure curve of solvent always always lies above above that of solutions solutions the vapor pressure curve of solutions shifts shifts downwards downwards with the addition with the addition of more solute more solute as in the example we can see over here the uh, the the pressure of the solvent at temperature tb is p that means this will boil at temperature tb but at tv at tv temperature the pressure of solvent one is only solvent solution one is p1 and that of solution two is only p2 right so at p1 and p2 obviously the solution will not boil at all right for example for example at temperature tb the vapor pressure of solvent solution one and solution two are p p1 and p2 respectively so this is the first conclusion similarly let's see the second conclusion that we can draw from here the second conclusion that we can draw from here is as the temperature increases the vapor pressure of the solution also increases look at here at temperature tb the vapor pressure of the first solvent is how much uh, yeah first sorry first solution is uh, this much p1 right but if the temperature reaches to t1 then its vapor pressure reaches to d over here that is p and it will start to boil so as as the temperature is increased as the temperature is increased the vapor pressure of the solution also increases also increases for example for example when when the temperature when the temperature reaches to t1 when the temperature reaches to t1 the vapor pressure of solution 1 and 2 reaches to reaches to uh, p and p1 respectively 
respectively. So at temperature T1, the vapor pressure of the first solution over here is now P, right? And that of second solution is now P1. So this is the second conclusion that we can draw from here. Now let's see the third conclusion. For that, let me erase this portion. Similarly, the third conclusion that we can draw from here is, see, the solvent solution 1 and solution 2 will only boil when their vapor pressure is equal to P. That means for solvent, the graph must touch over here C. For solution 1, the graph should, the curve should touch D. And for uh, solution 2, the curve should touch F, right? C, D and F. Now at C, the corresponding temperature is Tb. At D, the corresponding temperature is T1. And at, at F, the corresponding temperature is T2. That means for the solvent to boil, the temperature must be Tb. For the solution 1 to boil, the temperature must be T1. And for the solution to boil, the temperature must be T2. That means the boiling point of the solutions is always greater than that of the solvent. And here as well, the boiling point of solution 2 is greater than that of solution 1, right? So, we can conclude that the boiling point of the solution when non-volatile solute is added is always greater than that of the solvent. The boiling point of the solution is always greater than than the solvent solvent this is only in the case of non volatile solute solute addition okay if volatile solute is added then it will heat faster it will boil faster okay for example for example the boiling point of the boiling point of solvent solution 1 and solution 2 are Tb, T1 and T2 respectively. So these are the boiling point of solvent solution 1 and solution 2. I hope you understood everything about graph and you understood about the three conclusions that we can draw from the graph. Now let's see the mathematical calculation of the elevation of boiling point. We can use the concept of elevation of boiling point to calculate the molecular weight or molecular mass of the solute that is used to make the solution. For that we need to consider some of the things here. Here, Tb is the boiling point of solvent, T1 is the boiling point of solution 1 and T2 boiling point of solution 2, right, that we know. Now, the elevation of boiling point of solution 1 is equal to what is the elevation of boiling point of solution 1 t1 minus tb right t1 minus tb greater value minus smaller value similarly the elevation of boiling point of solution 2 is t2 minus tb right this is the condition now look at here the, the, uh, there are three curves over here. These are curves, but for but for very dilute solution, these curves will now become straight line, parallel straight line actually. So this curve will become like this now. Okay. For very dilute solution, for very dilute solution, the curve becomes straight straight parallel lines so when we make the solution very dilute then these curves will become now straight parallel lines this will be parallel to each other now okay then there will be two triangles this is the first triangle this whole is the second triangle so in triangles in triangle uh, C, B, D, C, B, D and triangle C, uh, 
C A F C A F these two are similar in triangle these two and these two these are similar triangles now okay similar triangles and as they are similar triangles then obviously the corresponding sides will be proportional to each other so we'll see these two angles this angle this angle this angle and this angle see the corresponding sides of this okay first of all this angle and this angle are same so uh, the opposite side of this angle in this triangle is cd will be cd by cf will be equal to cd by cf will be equal to cb by ca cb by ca now let me erase the upper portion so we got this much now let's put the values over here or cd cd means look at here cd means t1 minus tb t1 minus tb by cf cf means t2 minus tb t2 minus tb is equal to it will be uh, c b means p minus p1 p minus p1 by p minus p2 now we can do one thing t1 minus tb by t2 minus tb is equal to let's divide both of them numerator and denominator by p okay so it will be this much p2 sorry p now take this whole value to this side and this whole value to that side that is cross multiplication what will happen t1 minus tb by p minus p1 by p we get this much is equal to this will go at the numerator t2 minus tb by p minus p2 by p we get this much now what do we see over here look at here so there is t1 t2 number is increasing tb tb is constant pp is constant p1 p2 and pp is constant this t1 t2 p1 p2 are the temperature and vapor pressure of the solutions right so we can write in general in general we can write t as the temperature of the solution minus tb by p minus ps by p to be a constant so we can write this much as a constant so let's take this value to other side it will be t s minus tb is equal to constant constant into p minus ps by p so we get this much right if we remove this constant then what will we get ts minus tb proportional proportionality sign p minus ps by p so we get this much let us consider this to be equation number one because if we remove a constant we need to replace this equal to by a proportionality sign so we get this at the equation number one now look at here this right hand side p minus p p minus ps by p what is it this is the statement of raoul's law that is lowering of vapor pressure right so from raoul's law from raoul's law p minus ps by p that is lowering of vapor pressure is actually equal to n1 by n2 that is the mole fraction of the solute so for dilute case n1 in the denominator becomes zero right can be neglected so we write we are writing this much let's write let's solve it p minus ps by p is equal to n1 actually is w1 by m1 w2 by m2 here w1 is the given weight of the solute by the molecular weight or the molecular mass of the solute we need to calculate this value okay and w2 is the given weight of the solvent and m2 is the molecular weight or molecular mass of the solvent so it can further be written as p minus ps by p is equal to w1 into m2 by w2 into m1 so look at here this m2 is the molecular weight of the solvent so obviously this can be taken as the constant right for m2 to be uh, for m2 as a constant as a constant we can write this expression as p minus ps by p proportionality sine w1 by w2 into m1 we get this much let us consider this to be equation number two now let me read this portion so till now we got equation one and two now our, our another step is to 
equate them okay so from 1 and 2 look at here we can put the value of p minus ps by p in equation 1 from equation 2 so it will be ps minus tb proportionality sign w1 by w2 into m1 and this can be written as del tb this is the elevation in boiling point okay proportionality sign w1 by w2 into m1 now we can replace this proportionality sign by equal to and put a constant over here that is kb kb w1 by w2 into m1 where this kb is called the elevation constant or molar elevation constant or molecular elevation constant you can say anything okay where kb is molecular elevation constant constant or elevation of boiling point constant you can say anything to it okay so kb is a constant value so we can get the value of this m1 m1 is equal to to uh, get the value we need to take m1 to this side and this to this side so it will be kb into w1 by del tb into w2 this is the required mathematical expression to calculate the value of molecular weight or molecular mass of the given solute now what is this kb how can we define it there must be a way or there must be a definition of kb as well because in examination uh, it might ask what is the meaning of kb now to get the value of kb from this equation look at here okay we have an expression del tb is equal to kb w1 by w2 into m1 w1 by m1 w1 by m1 m1 actually means del tb is equal to kb into n1 by w2 that is number of moles right n1 means w1 by m1 so we can now for n1 is equal to 1 mole and w2 is equal to 1 kg this expression will become del tb is equal to kb so we can define molar uh, sorry we can define elevation constant so elevation constant constant can be defined defined as the elevation elevation in boiling point when when one mole one mole of solute one mole of solute is dissolved dissolved in one kg of solvent so this is the definition of this kb and our required expression is this one okay we calculated the value of uh, this molecular weight or molecular mass of the solute so this is all about elevation in boiling points in this video we understood what elevation of boiling point actually is we uh, learned how to draw the graph and we drew some conclusion and we calculated the value of molecular weight or molecular mass of the given solute by doing some mathematical calculation with the help of this graph as well that's all in this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video